Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about osteoporosis. I'm going to be talking about what it is and what it means for exercise and for your Pilates practice. So I'm Zoe, I'm a physiotherapist and Pilates instructor and I'm the founder of Pilates Health Online. And Pilates Health Online is specifically for women and it's designed to help you get back into exercise, build your confidence so that you can do the things that you want to do and to feel fitter, stronger and healthier as well. So osteoporosis is something that I get asked a lot about and you know, if I've got osteoporosis, can I do Pilates? What, what does that mean? Are there any exercises that I should avoid? Um, and it's all fantastic questions. And yes, you can do Pilates, um, but yes, there are some things that you need to be aware of. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit about that in this video. So first of all, what is osteoporosis and what happens in our bones? So our bones are living structures and what I mean by that is that all the way through our life, our bone, we're constantly getting new bone being laid down and older bone being reabsorbed. And what we want to make sure is that we sort of have this balance of new bone being laid down, old bone being reabsorbed. And if, we, if they're at the same rate, then we get this sort of level, this constant sort of bone density or bone strength. Now, when we are younger, we've got more bone being laid down and less bone being reabsorbed. So we tend to lay down more bone sort of in our teenage years and as children, and we sort of get that build up and build our bone strength. And a lot of our bone strength comes from, from our early years. As we move through life, what tends to happen, particularly for women, uh, not exclusively, because we have changes as we get older anyway, but we, we're, talk, we're thinking about women. So let's talk about what happens to us. So as we move through life, as we move through the menopause and after the menopause, what tends to happen is we tend to still lay down our new bone, still reabsorb our old bone, but the rate changes. So we tend to reabsorb more bone than we lay down. Now, the reason for that is that estrogen tends to have a protective effect on our bone. So it stops that reabsorption. As we move into the menopause and beyond, our estrogen levels drop, which means that we've got that tendency to reabsorb more bone. Does that mean that you will develop osteoporosis? No, but it means that the potential is there. So what we wanna be doing is exercising and moving our body, making sure that we're doing things that are encouraging our body to lay down more bone. Because our body is really clever and if we can um, do certain exercises and things that encourage our body to lay down more bone, it will. It will say, right, okay, I can see that you're doing these exercises, we need a little bit more bone strength in this area and it will lay it down. Now, exercise is only one part of it. Obviously, we need to make sure that we've got a good diet. Vitamin D is really important um, in the absorption of calcium, which is obviously to do with our bones as well. Um, so making sure that we've got enough vitamin D is really, um, really important. And I always say before changing uh, your diet or supplements or anything, then obviously do get some advice. Um, but just getting outside in sunlight, that gives us, gives us some doses of vitamin, vitamin D. So if we can get out in nature, get out for, go out for a walk, we're doing a couple of things. We're getting our vitamin D, we're using our body, so we're walking, so we're obviously weight-bearing exercise is fantastic for our bone strength. Um, and also, there's lots of research suggests that getting out in nature actually helps relax us and calm everything down. So going out for a walk actually has lots and lots of benefits. So what is osteoporosis then? Osteoporosis is when we lose our bone strength or our bone strength or our density, we call it, but our bone strength reduces enough that it puts us at risk of, a, of breaking a bone. Now, again, that doesn't mean that if you've got osteoporosis, you will automatically break a bone. But what it means is that your bones aren't as strong, so the potential is there. So again, we need to be thinking about 
um, how we're moving, what exercises we're doing, making sure that we're doing exercises that are encouraging our bone strength and improving our bone strength, and perhaps avoiding those exercises that have the potential to put more strain on different parts of our body, um, on our spine, um, just again to look after, look after everything. Now, you might have heard of something called osteopenia. Now, osteopenia is sort of somewhere in the middle. So if we have our ideal bone density, our nice strong bones at one end, we have our osteoporosis where we've got some, some reduction in our bone strength at the other end. Osteopenia is somewhere on that scale, sort of in the middle. It means that we've got a reduction in our bone strength, but it's not enough to be diagnosed as osteoporosis, if that makes sense. So we, again, we still need to have the same principles. I always say to people, if you've been diagnosed with osteopenia, then I would, I would use the same sort of awareness as if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, because that way you're going to be making sure that you're doing the right exercises and you're also going to be protecting your joints and your spine to make sure that you're keeping everything in a good position. So just to recap, our bones are living structures. They change all the way through our life. As we approach the menopause and go through the menopause, because our estrogen levels drop, what tends to happen is we lose that sort of protective effect on our bones and we can start to absorb a little bit more bone than we lay down, which means that our bones have the potential to get a lift. They're not as strong doesn't mean that you'll automatically get osteoporosis though and there are lots and lots of things that we can do all it means is that we need to be paying attention to it and we need to be making sure that we're exercising and we are using our body in the right way to help encourage that bone strength so i don't want you to be there thinking this is all doom and gloom it's not at all it's just something that we need to to be aware of so if we think of osteoporosis and pilates or osteopenia and Pilates. What does that actually mean for your Pilates practice? Does it mean that you can do Pilates? Is Pilates a good form of exercise for osteoporosis? What's it all about? So the first thing to say is that not all Pilates is the same. So we have sort of Pilates that perhaps as physios we tend to, to teach that perhaps is more focused on getting people back into exercise and um, perhaps working on our strength and different things. Um, we sometimes call it modified Pilates because we don't include some of the exercises that we feel perhaps maybe put a bit more strain on certain parts of the body. Doesn't mean that you don't work hard. It doesn't mean that we don't um, really sort of challenge you with some of those exercises. It just means we perhaps approach it from a different way. So I think if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, it's really important that you pick an instructor who understands what osteoporosis is and what it actually means for, for your Pilates practice. The main things that we need to think about is avoiding exercises that are doing repetitive bending movements. So things like sit-ups, so lying on your back doing a sit-up, we would want to avoid if you've got osteoporosis or osteopenia. And the reason for that is because there is some research to suggest that when we do those movements, it puts a little bit more pressure on the bones in the front of our spine. So again, that's fine, but if you've got a little bit of weakness, what we don't wanna be doing is putting more pressure on those, that part of the bone that tends to be a little bit weaker with, if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis. So we tend to advise against any repetitive bending movements in your Pilates classes. The other thing that we tend to advise against is anything that bends and twists at the same time, because again, it has more potential to put the pressure on the part of the spine that can be a little bit weaker or is prone to that little bit reduction in our bone strength if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis. But there are so many exercises that you can do um, and weight bearing exercise, getting some weight through your joints is really important. So using our body weight, can actually help encourage us to lay down more bone. So it's not just standing exercises, although standing exercises are really important. It might be weight on your hands and knees or getting some weight through your arms and through your joints as well. Um, and again, Pilates traditionally is a lot down on the mat. So 
particularly in my classes, we spend a lot of time in standing as well as down on the mat doing our exercises because the importance, you know, there's so much importance in, um, in weight bearing and getting that weight through the joints. The other thing is doing exercises that are working on our muscle strength because our muscles attach to our bones. And as we use our muscles, then the, um, the bone strength around the area as well can improve. So working on exercises, again, within our own level, we don't have to be lifting like really, really heavy weights, just some very light weights will add on that extra level and we'll be working on, um, working on our, our bone strength. Using resistance bands, so using bands that again are getting that resistance will be working on our muscle strength and also on our bone strength as well. So the most important thing is to be making sure that you're doing the right exercises for you that you have an instructor that understands osteoporosis and can make those modifications for you um, and that you build up gradually. You don't just sort of go all in. Um, I know we all like to do that. You know, we want to get back into exercise and we sort of go all in um, and we're working on different things. It's about that gradual, that gradual progression. Start where you are now and just take those little steps to build up. The one thing I do want to say is that if you have had a previous fracture, um, associated with your osteoporosis, particularly a spine fracture, so a fracture of your back, then I always recommend that if you're going to get started with Pilates, that you actually have one-to-one -one sessions first with, an, with a physio or somebody who, again, understands osteoporosis to make sure that you're in a good position, that you can make those little adjustments that may be a little bit more specific to you um, and that you can get started in the right way. Then, once you're happy and you feel confident, then go into an in-person class before you add in sort of any sort of online stuff so that you can be confident in the movements that you're doing um, and the, the positioning. Just because if you've had a previous fracture, obviously what we want to make sure is that we're doing everything in the right way um, for you and that you're building up and you're going to get the most out of the, the exercises. And as always, if you're not sure then have a chat with your GP or health professional before you get started because they're going to be able to give you um, the best advice because they're going to know your, your medical history. So that was a lot of information. So just to recap, Pilates is fine if you have been diagnosed with osteoporosis, but there are some exercises that you would need to avoid or modify. So it's really important that you have an instructor that understands your osteoporosis um, and that can give you those modifications. It's all about starting at the right level, working and just building up gradually, working on our muscle strength, weight bearing exercises, um, and just as I say, working. It's, we, we all of us need to be working on these things. So even if you haven't been diagnosed with osteoporosis, doing exercise, moving our body is so important because our body's designed to move. That's what it's, that's what it's designed to do. Um, and if we don't move it, that's when we get a little bit of muscle weakness. Um, and obviously that's what we don't want. So keep moving, keep moving. Now, if you want to find out more about Pilates and about how osteoporosis fits in as well, and the menopause and all this, all this stuff, then I am running my free workshop starting on the 7th of June. And we're going to be talking about all these things. So it's not just Pilates. Yes, we're going to be doing some Pilates classes. We're going to be doing, getting um, our body moving. We're going to be working in standing on the mat, on our balance, our strength, our flexibility. Um, but also we're going to be working out what the best exercises to do are, how to build that exercise into your life. I'll be talking a little bit more about the menopause and how that affects how we need to think about exercise and perhaps what we need to focus a little bit more on. We'll be talking a bit more about osteoporosis and how that fits into Pilates as well and I can be going through some of those modifications with you. So if you would like to join me in that workshop, as I say it's absolutely free, I run it a couple of times a year and it's designed to help you to get started really and to know if Pilates is something that you enjoy and that you want to do. Because with the best will in the world, exercise should be fun. It should be something that you enjoy, not a chore. So come and give Pilates a try. See if it's something that you, um, that you like and enjoy and see if it, it, you feel the benefits. So it starts on Monday the 7th of June. All you need to do is to sign up and register to take part. We will take care of the rest. 
come and join us, give Pilates a try, find out all about um, how we need to build exercise into our life, um, and I'll be there to guide you through every step of the way as well. So if you've got any questions, pop a comment below or above this video, depending on where you are watching it. Um, and I'll be back next week with another session. And then I'm going to have a couple of weeks off because I'm going to be concentrating, obviously, on um, running the workshop. So there'll be a couple of weeks off with these, um, with these videos while I help everybody get started in the workshop. So hopefully I'll see you there. So take care and I'll see you soon.